We've been living in the yurt for five months. So it's Joe and I and our two black cats. It's, it's definitely an adventure and we've had a lot of fun doing it. It gets us outdoors more. And I think it's been a great way to make a change in our life for the better. The yurt itself we built in one day. It is the lattice walls, then it's the linens, then there's the double insulation, then there's a vapor barrier, which is the waterproof stuff, and then there's canvas on the outside. So this is our full-time home. Um, I think how this came about was kind of a sudden unexpected um, adventure. <laughs> Joe and I are into adventures, we love traveling and stuff, and we'd applied for jobs up in this area, and it was such a fast decision we had to make. We were looking at building a log home, but we could not get a contractor through COVID. So that really become kind of a crisis situation for us because we were living in our schoolie. Um, so I think really what the biggest thing was is we were looking for a home that was going to be natural materials. It was going to be something that was wider than a bus or a trailer and something that gave us a little bit of space and, you know, was kind to the planet. I started doing some research, so online, and yurt kept popping up. We were looking at different ones, and then groovy yurts popped up. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And the price factor was definitely, you know, a seller on it. So we started looking into it, and I was showing Joe, and I'm like, what do you think? He's like, yeah, sure. Well, I figured if it's uh, withstand the winds in Mongolia, we'll be okay here. <laughs> <laughs> We looked at like tiny homes and stuff and trailers and you're looking at a lot of money. So I just found that, you know what, this for right now was definitely an affordable option. Our yurt in total cost us $18,000 and we'd done some upgrades to it. So that was the double layers of the felt insulation, which is the wool um, from sheep. And then we'd put in our three windows in the back Two are um, like static windows, and we have one that actually opens and closes. So it's almost like a second door, but it also allows that airflow to go through. Um, with the upgrades, what else did we do? We went to a super gir, like the 20, 20 foot, um, which just allows for the higher ceilings in it. So, you know, for taller people, when you walk in, you have a bit more headroom. But I think the price point was, it was right on for us. Our yurt is paid, so, you know, that is a huge bonus. I mean, really, right now, what do we pay? We pay our hydro, you know, our insurance, and our internet is really the basis of what we have to pay, right? It's not, it's not a lot. So definitely um, living in a yurt and not having that additional expense of a mortgage and all of these other things that go along with it is a bonus. So it's definitely a saving to live here. So our land situation is we're sitting on um, like a triangle chunk of land. So it's six acres in total. We live on a First Nation here in Ontario. So our land situation is different. Um, we don't technically hold a deed. It's called a certificate of possession. So I think anybody who's building up here, they're going through the same process. You put in your foundation, build your house, you know, and like I said, I think it's, it's pretty similar to anywhere else. We cleared out the land and then it was a kind of tried to have as flat as possible surface and we put the deck on it. It's a 30 by 40 and in the middle of it we put the 20 foot yurt on it. It's a white pine, uh, double insulated and we also built the floor ourselves and we got the red pine on the inside. We also have them the kind of skylights up there so, so we can actually watch the stars at night or open it up for ventilation when it gets too hot in here. And so far, it's pretty comfortable in here. It's definitely a different structure. So if you've never built one, you'd want to get assistance on the first one. So we had help from Groovy Yurt. The whole idea of living in the round and the open concept, I love. But you have to stay organized. If not, it would drive you crazy just looking at clutter and mess. So I really like it. I find it therapeutic for me because I need to have things neat and tidy and organized. It wasn't a huge, you know, adapting period. I think we kind of just fell into it and it just worked. The same as being in the schoolie. You know what I mean? Everything is just there and it's all open. 
we had just set up a like a kitchen table. I mean, I can work there. I do some of my Zoom meetings and Teams meetings, you know, for work, sitting at the table. We designed like a little bit of a kitchen here in the back, a kitchenette, just with the sink in that. Um, Joe has been very crafty because you are working on an angle, like a strange angle all the time. And even his invention here to keep our pillows from falling behind the bed, <laughs> it's, he's cutting half moons and there's boards and it's just a setup. It's a procedure. It's, it's hard to put anything in because you're always in angles, right? And I had a, not a very nice time to put the floor in because it's, you got everything, every board is a cut to another angle, right? So at least you don't have to clean any corners, right? <laughs> So for anybody not used to living in something that's round, it's definitely different. And furniture does not fit the same. Yeah, so uh, electricity we put on the property before we actually started building anything. So we have a ground cable coming in. So we have basically a, a, like a construction hookup for hydro. We've been warned about condensation and mold and stuff like that. But because we're not cooking in here, we don't have that like amount of steam and condensation. But you can feel when the dampness comes, when you get a rainy day and it's just that kind of wet, heavy snow. And we've had that already this year. Um, you can feel the difference that it makes with having the wood stove. But it doesn't burn, you know, forever. So if you're gone away or we go away overnight, my biggest concern is the cats <laughs> and the cats freezing. So we do have the little oil filled radiator heater, which is great because we've been able to just plug it in, let it run and it keeps it comfortable overnight. So we know we're not coming back to a freezing yurt. So I think you have to have a heat source going at all times. And the wood stove can be a little bit overpowering. Small space in a wood stove is something you definitely have to learn how to regulate. <laughs> Cooling it, we cooled it with an air conditioner this summer and that took nothing because it's such a small space. We're looking at just a little over 300 square feet, you know, which is not a lot of space to have to heat or cool. So it's a lot less waste. With water supply, we bring the water in in jugs and we also take the gray water out in jugs. We put the little RV pump so we can, with a little sink, so you can do dishes in here. And for drinking water, we just use uh, like a Culligan water bottle kind of thing. We go to our laundry in the hotel or we go to the laundry mat. And we don't really cook in here at all. We make coffee and stuff like that, but uh, most of the cooking is outside, either slow cooker, since we got electricity or barbecue or even open fire. We added on a little wood jet on the side, and on the side uh, that was supposed to be a little bit a kitchen cabinet. And uh, whenever the weather gets really bad, probably that's where we put the barbecue. And we also got a couple of propane burners in there, so it's a little more comfortable the outdoor cooking. And we also added on that time a little shower, which is an outdoor shower. It has a roof over the top, and it's kind of covered in, uh, where we. Again, bring the water in in jugs and uh, run it through a propane instant heater. And uh, it is really good, worked really good through the fall and the summer. But now in the winter, it would freeze the water. And uh, so now we rely on taking showers in truck stop or in the, going to the gym and have a shower after that, something like that. So the shower is closed for the winter. <laughs> we also have an outhouse out there, which uh, we built there and uh, so this is for our morning comfort. <laughs> so we just recently had our well drilled and we're sitting now contemplating what are we going to do. We could have put in like a pump house this year but you know like we're kind of running late in the season to get into doing that. Um, but I think eventually what we want to do is we want to have like a comfort station to have like a washroom, the shower um, and have like an addition onto it which allows us to cook out there, wash our dishes and things like that. So that would come with putting in our septic system. Because it has that vapor barrier over it, it doesn't leak through, so it's waterproofed us. No water doesn't come in. It's the only the only maintenance what they told us what we have to keep up, get the snow off. So because the snow, because you don't want any pooling water. Well, if the snow and ice forms a shield on it, then yeah. we're going to get condensation in here because it can't breathe through. Then you did the 
the skirts on the outside, on the north side of the yurt. Just from the, that being the north side, right, it just kind of grew like a green mildew. It almost looks like grass stains on it. But just get a mold and mildew spray, you just spray it on there. I took it and threw it in the laundry machine. Right after spraying it, it came out like it was brand new. So all these little tips and tricks that you don't realize, you know, like are very helpful. But I don't think it's been a lot of maintenance. So here, I think because we've eliminated a lot of stuff, I find when I look around, I have like a peaceful mind. I'm grateful for the things that I decided to keep, the things that I use. It just makes life so much easier when there's less stuff. And a yurt doesn't allow you to store anything anywhere. You have to look at it and be like, okay, what can I actually have in here? You need multi-purpose stuff that can do a bunch of different jobs, right? A challenge. Really, it's the water situation and mm -hmm. the outdoor washroom situation. You don't realize how you take for granted having a bathroom in your house, right? When you're not feeling well and you're up back and forth to the bathroom, that's a challenge. No running water is definitely a challenge. I think um, living in a space, you know, that is not as soundproof maybe as some houses, you know, you hear different things. I mean, it's a challenge, but it's also fun at the same time because we hear owls, we hear, you know, different animals and stuff like that outside at night. So that's exciting. When things are good, things are good. But, you know, you definitely realize and you have gratitude, you know, for indoor plumbing when you don't have it. <laughs> One of the things is definitely it, keep, it keeps you on your toes, right? But you, uh, you gotta go out every day. Like if it's snowing, you gotta shuffle the snow. If you need water, you gotta get it. You know, and stuff like that. So you always have to stay on top of everything. Not just uh, if you have a big house and I don't wanna do the laundry today and throw it in the next room and close the door, right? We don't have this luxury. <laughs> and so you do something every day and then it's never a big deal to have a huge amount to do at once then. So this is what I like the best. The only challenge I have is I got a dirty job. I'm a mechanic, so I crawl underneath big trucks and buses. So I need a shower every day. That's the only challenge I have, personally. You just modify it, eh? like uh, all your needs, you just make it in a way to make it easier. So you learn while you go, right? And then all of a sudden it's not such a big challenge anymore. I honestly wouldn't change a second of it. And I said to Joe the other day, I'm like, I said, it's so funny because we've been here five months living here like this and it seems like forever. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it's been five months. It just seems like we've always been here, living here in the yurt, right? It's been an adventure, but it's been a good adventure. As we think about like creating our yurts, right? Like our little yurt resort here, um, like calling it the mindful makwa. Makwa is the bear for Algonquin, right? And I just feel that, you know, that is a fitting name for, for the yurt. You know, it's just like a little den you're walking into and it's a peaceful little place to stay. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and please share this video if you liked it. You can also follow Leah and Joe on Instagram and Facebook at The Mindful Makwa. Thanks for watching.